Good morning and welcome to a very special interview show of the Proot. We are delving into a critical topic today that has garnered attention in recent time, HMPV. As the world continues to grapple with a variety of respiratory viruses, understanding HMPV's spread, impact and how we can protect ourselves is more crucial than ever. Joining us today to discuss this significant global health issue is the former chairperson of the South African Medical Association and the doctor who discovered the Omicron variant of COVID-19, Dr. Angelique Koitza. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time and a very warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much and thank you for having me on your show. Ma'am, I would like to begin the discussion by asking that, can you please explain what HMPV is? Is it a new virus or it has been around for some time? What are your initial uh, um, impression of the virus? Thank you. I think it's a very important question. Um, we need to understand that this HMPV virus is a respiratory virus. It belongs to the family Paramyxoviridae. And that family also includes your respiratory syncytical virus, or what we normally call RSV, and para-influence viruses. And primarily, it will cause respiratory illnesses in people of all ages. Doesn't matter whether you're young, old, doesn't matter. Um, so it will be, you know, it's, it's a common uh, uh, virus that we are seeing. But to come back to your question, and I think this is the this is the difference between one of the biggest dif differentiators between um, HMPV and COVID is that HMPV is not a new virus. Please, it's not new. It's it was only identified around 2001 by the Dutch researchers. But if they look at the retrospective studies, it have revealed that it has likely been circulating in humans for more for a lot of decades. Um, and long before its discovery. So if I then look at the genetic analysis, it suggests that your HMPV shares a common ancestor with your avian um, meta nemo virus. And, 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 and I think that it likely crossed over from birds to humans in the distant part. Uh, past. Um, so if you look at... Uh, um, uh, since it has been identified, it has been recognized as a um, significant cause of the respiratory illnesses worldwide, especially the, what we are seeing in children under the age of five. And I think this is what is important. It is important to understand it's been there for many years. It most probably come, you know, uh, uh, mutated from avian bird flu to or from avians to, to humans. Um, a lot of humans um, will have, and like COVID, a normal uh, uh, immune uh, response, or a, uh, you know, have been in uh, been in contact with it before, and not as what we have seen with COVID that you've never been exposed to it. So. And therefore, it was much more severe. But we can come back later to the differences. So, yes, it, um, it is an important question that you're asking. Yeah. Uh, so how dangerous or fatal is HMPV? Uh, would you say it's as dangerous as the COVID-19 or, you know, uh, or does it pose a different level of threat to uh, public health compared to COVID? It's different. So it is a, it is considered a notable respiratory pathogen. Remember, it's alongside with your RSV and influenza. Um, it is important to understand that most of your infections on, with your HMPV is mild, but it's got the potential for severe disease in certain vulnerable populations, and therefore it should be a focus for on, ongoing public health monitoring and research. So if you look at the recent advancement in diagnostic tools, um, it has increased the awareness of its impact, though uh, through its seasonal patterns and the clinical presentations that have remained consistent over time. So we know this has been there. So in the dangerous, um, it's not as um, uh, dangerous than we have seen with COVID. However, it poses a different level of threat to your public compared to your COVID-19. And if you then look at the severity or the fatality of your HMPV, it's more mild and self-limiting in your healthy individuals. Um, as I've said, you know, it's, it's, it's very similar to your RSV and your flu viruses. So you will present with symptoms like your common flu or mild respiratory illnesses. And again, as in all of our viruses, regardless whether it's COVID or any of the other viruses, your infants, your older um adults and your immune compromised patients, they would have um, might 
suffer um, from severe lower respiratory tract infections like your bronchiolitis and your pneumonia. Mortality, um, the, the, the HMPV-related deaths are relatively rare, uh, can occur in certain cases. The global burden is significant, but it's got not the same level of documented fatality as what we have seen with COVID-19. And we also know that HMPV is a leading cause of pediatric hospitalizations. Again, you know, the, 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 um, due to the uh, uh, RSV uh, likeness that we do see, common cause for, for children. Um, no, uh, if you look at, uh, again, COVID-19, we've seen, you know, millions of deaths globally with your with your with your COVID-19 we saw long COVID uh, with COVID-19 none of this is being seen with HMPV so the fatality rate also much lower and as I've said your COVID-19 uh, spreads um, more um, efficiently uh, than you you see with your HMPV HMPV is more seasonal COVID was any time we we didn't um, there was not a, a specific time, and again it was mo most probably because there were no immune systems um, exposed to COVID nineteen. While we know HMPV is there for a, quite a few decades, and a lot of people has got immunity against it. Yeah, so uh, you know who is at the most risk of uh, contracting HMPV and experiencing several complications? You told about uh, you know children. So apart from children who are at the most risk, and are certain age groups or individuals with specific conditions more vulnerable? Yes, um, do you want to come back to the children? So why the young children, the infants and your children are under the age of five years are more um, exposed? Is because they they've got an immature immune system, which makes it less effective at fighting these type of, of infections. Remember, I've just mentioned that your HMPV is also a leading cause of bronchiolitis and pneumonia in children. So if you look at your older age, um, adults, which is also vulnerable, it's the ages of 65 and older. And again, it's come back to your immune system. Why are they vulnerable? Because your immune function naturally decline with age. Uh, so the older you get, the the, the poorer your immune f function comes or becomes. So that's why many of your older adults have chronic conditions that exacerbate your respiratory illnesses, like COPD, like chronic asthma for many years, and therefore we got this high rates of hospitalization. And then the other group again is your immunocompromised individuals, people like we've got cancer, they undergo chemotherapy organ uh, or stem cell transplants, uh, people with HIV, um, AIDS, because, um, again, their immune system are compromised and they, they, their ability to fight off infections then leads to higher viral loads and more severe disease. And I think that's important to understand. And then some of your chronic medication patients who's not complying with their, uh, compliant with their treatment, doesn't go for their chronic um, yearly investigations, don't look after themselves, they will also be compromised. I, um, I hope this makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so what steps can individuals take to protect themselves from HMPV? Are there any particular precautions or preventive measures recommended for avoiding infection? Yes, and I think it's important for your listeners to understand that if you look at your prevention, it is it is regardless whether it's um, flu virus or influenza, whether it's uh, 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 your HMPV virus, whether it is COVID, it's always for viral infections. It's more or less the same type of prevention. So the first thing what we need to look at is hygienic practices, your frequent hand washing. Avoid close contact with sick people. Disinfect commonly touched surfaces. You know, if someone is extremely ill, just make sure that you actually use protective measurements like gloves and masks if um, if that patient is extremely sick or, if, or your sibling or your per person that lives in your house. Also, minimize exposure in crowded spaces for high-risk individuals. We so sometimes see that patients really very sick. They still go and buy some groceries or something at, um, at the shopping center, not knowing or realizing that they actually spread the virus to any, everyone else. So yeah, that is, that is one of the best or biggest things that one can do is to avoid your con close contact, 
you know, good uh, hygiene. Uh, we also call it um, the mosque. It's also called a practice respiratory hygiene. So when you cover your mouth and your nose with a tissue or elbow when you cough or sneeze, it helps stop the spreading. Then dispose um, of that used tissue immediately afterwards and then go and wash your hands again. Um, then avoid touching your face, stay home when you're sick. Please, I do not understand why people go to work when they are sick. Even if it's only a common flu that you think you've got, stay at home. You're going to infect the whole office by sneezing. And avoid sending sick children to school or daycare or nursery schools. That's the thing that we see very, very often. So that's the most important things that one need to to look at if, you know, to try to prevent your, yourself to get infected or trying to prevent to to um, spread this virus. Uh, now coming to the vaccine. So is there any current vaccine available for HMPV or are there any ongoing efforts to develop one? So what are your thoughts on the current state of vaccine research for the virus? There's no approved vaccine available for its HMPV virus. We know these ongoing research um, efforts and the, where they try to develop a vaccine due to, but due to the virus significant burden on your vulnerable groups, especially your young children, adults and immune compromised individuals, they need to get something on the more um, that's that you know to do develop something. But there are challenges in the your vaccine development. So if you look at some of the challenges, it will be the similarity to um RSV, that the respiratory synthetical virus, because your HMPV shares many characteristics with your RSV virus, um, so which makes that vaccine development very difficult. Um, also, your HMPV, we know it can evade the immune system by suppressing your innate immune system or responses and also making the vaccine design much more complicated. And then again, the old problem is vaccines must be safe and effective across a wide range of age groups, especially your infants, your older patients, and those with immune response problems. So that's the, the, the there are there are some some promising studies in the animals that they've been used where they try to, um, to develop a subunit vaccines. Um, but it, it, it has demonstrated some potential for electing your protective immune response, but it's still very early. And then also, again, if we look at what happened with the COVID-19 and the success of the mRNA vaccines, they are also exploring this platform to look at an mRNA vaccine uh, that can maybe target the viral proteins to generate um, these immunity. So that is where we are. There is currently no vaccines available. And ma'am, uh, what countries, according to you, are at the most risk or what continents, if you have to mention? Currently, what we're seeing and what we know is that we know that um, China, they, it's the seasonal to, um, or flu season time. Uh, they do see, they have say, said we, that is actually where the whole hype is coming from, is from the, the data which is not verified um, of overcrowded hospitals with people with um, with this virus, HMPV virus. Problem is, um, you know, less, lessons learned from China before uh, with the COVID is there was first um, poor, um, you know, explanation, not good data coming from that um, country. So a lot of people is distrustful currently when China is saying, you know, um, it's not true, we don't have an outbreak at this stage. We know the World Health Organization is keeping a close eye um, on the developments in China, but for now, that is actually the biggest. There has been cases in the USA. We know that India also um, has, uh, released a report saying that uh, currently in India that they don't see a problem, there's no problem yet. But again, as I've said, it's early days um, during the flu seasons. We um, the weathers are very unpredictable, so we'll see. But would it pose uh, such a same danger than we have seen with COVID nineteen? No, it won't. It should never be, and we should never go back to that lockdown measurements that we have seen during COVID nineteen. Never ever. That was that was horrible. 
Yeah. Uh, so I would like to conclude the discussion by asking that given the rise in respiratory viruses globally, how important is it for public health systems and professionals to monitor and respond to outbreaks of HMPV and what are the best practices for managing its spread? Yeah, very good question as well. So surveillance, surveillance, surveillance. So you need to integrate your HMPV testing into your routine um, RSV surveillance programs, which is not currently being done. Then we know that you get a PCR test. That's a swap, a nasal swap or a throat swap that you can detect your HMPV alongside your other respiratory tract uh, viruses. We need to make sure that it's cost effective because currently it's quite expensive to do those tests. You need to monitor your trends in your hospitalization and severe illnesses that's only due to HMPV, especially during your, your peak season. So it's testing, testing, testing. Then what I've already mentioned is the data sharing, the collaboration. Um, we need to encourage that this global and regional collaboration to share the data on your HMPV incidents, the trends and the outbreaks. And we, again, um, it is ex extremely important to include your HMPV in your respiratory disease reports. As I've already mentioned, your RSV, your influenza and your SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we need to get this data and we need to understand the data so that we can make better um, judgments and better uh, uh, surveillance and, and uh, going forward and, and give better advice to the patients. So this always research is always also very, very um, important to, to get these data and the epidemiological studies that's out there. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable insights on this pressing global health issue. We sincerely hope the situation stays under control. On that note, we deeply appreciate your time and perspective. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for asking me and have a great day. Thank you very much, ma'am.